So this video is essentially just a set of back-to-back -back tutorials. I firmly believe you will not find this kind of value anywhere else on the internet. But this is not gonna be the most interesting video, okay? It's just gonna be tutorials on instantly, go high level, Canonly, much, much more, okay? But as I mentioned, not the most engaging video, but if you do have this up on a split screen uh, with another Chrome tab and you copy exactly what I'm doing, you'll be able to sign clients very, very quickly. So let's go ahead and get right into it. You're gonna need a couple basic softwares uh, in terms of the infrastructure. So the first one's gonna be Canonly. So this is gonna be your scheduler. There's a free version of this, but you know the paid version is only $12 for one user. I believe you can get two users for $20. So if you've got a closer or a business partner, you're probably gonna, gonna get that version. GoDaddy, buy the domains, get them for less than uh, £9.99. Google Workspace, where you can do all the emails, etc. $5 per user. Go high level. Uh, so you can get a free 14 day trial with that. And then the basic plan is $97 per month. And that gives you three sub accounts. So for two other clients, and then you can upgrade to the bigger version, which has as many sub accounts as you like, which is $297 per month. Then you have got instantly. So you can get the $30 basic plan. But uh, what we're going to go over later is some of the email tactics. Uh, if you want to do outbound email, you're going to need the $97 hyper growth plan. You've got Loom. So there's a free version. You get 25 free videos with that. Or you can just upgrade to the normal one and get uh, do that for $12.50 per month. PandaDoc, this is for contracts, $90 monthly. QuickBooks, that is for accounting, £1.40 or $1.40. Stripe fees, so for any transaction that you get, I believe the current Stripe fee is at 2.9%. Zapier for automating everything. You got free, and then I believe you just pay per zap. And then for meetings, you can start with Google Meet. But um, once you get your first couple of clients, you're going to want to upgrade that to Zoom. I personally really like Zoom. It's just way more professional when clients take you uh, way more seriously. So niche selection, uh, I'm just going to go over this really quickly. Now, there are actually six main points uh, to go through, but that is all in the hybrid coaching program. But yeah, let's go over niche selection. Um, and one of the biggest misconceptions that I personally believe is that you need to be interested in the niche to uh, have success with it. I really firmly disagree with that. Waste management billionaires are not interested in waste management. I'm not interested in real estate. Yeah, I've got a real estate agency. People doing home improvement, very profitable niche at the moment, aren't interested in home improvement. Okay. Uh, but some of the key points is going to be the earnings of the prospects in this niche. So, they can't be broke, boys. We're going to be selling $2,000 to $8,000 packages here all up front. If they don't have the money for this, there's no point pitching them, right? Even if you do them on payment plans, they will just run out of money. Make sure that they are kind of affluent people. The average earnings is over at least 40 grand per year. Then secondly is the ease of of generating and contacting leads who are decision makers. So this is why I really like real estate because all of the leads, all the realtors in America can be found on one website called um, realtor.com. And you know we use instant data scraper to get those leads. I know for home improvement, they all, all can be found on Yelp. And then you've got things like Yelp scraper. Then if, and for gyms, you can just use Google Maps. I know many different softwares for that. You could use Apify or Phantom Buster to scrape all of those. Uh, then thirdly, you've got the amount of change to required to service individual clients. So can you just copy and paste your service or can you just uh, get you know the key bits of your service and then just get CSM to change that for every little client? Or is every client drastically different? Are they going to require you to kind of advertise on different ad, uh, advertising platforms, use different flows and go high level, require different services like website building, or one of you wants just to build you funnels, or one of them wants AI calling, or one of them actually just wants normal ads. If you've got all of these different things to go, it's going to be very hard to systemize. And particularly if you're a beginner agency owner, that's something that I really wouldn't or really would try to avoid. So offer creation. Credit to uh, Charlie Morgan and Sam Ovens for actually coming up with a framework here. Obviously, you've got uh, Hormozzi's framework of how to create value, but um, I really, really like what Charlie Morgan's here, uh, what Charlie Morgan's done here in creating sort of um, a specific equation for using in SMMA. So firstly, we've got identify the dream outcome. So you 
re recognize this from Hormozzi's value equation. So that could be anything like attain 10,000 in monthly revenue, secure 100 appointments, lose 10 kilos for people in um, kind of coaching business. Um, timeline, achieve in 180, 90 days, 45 days with select outcomes such as database reactivation. So you can say, oh, we'll get you three appointments in the first day because we're doing a database reactivation. OK, and you've got really got to minimize that timeline, again, referring to Alex Hormozzi's value equation strategies, use our exclusive IG Manole appointment setting system, risk mitigation. This is what I believe is actually one of the most important ones. So choose on pay and results, pay per appointments, eat what you kill, guaranteed options, target audience. So this is disqualifying some people in that uh, in that niche. So for gyms, we did independent gym owners only, or you could say tailored for committed individuals only, established businesses only. Pricing options, you've got many, many different ones. I'm gonna go over the three main ones later in this video. So you've got pay performance, one-time fees, retainers, etc. And I just wanted to create this example one of what it actually looks like for bathroom, for bathroom remodelers. So for bathroom remodelers, it'll be dream outcome, five jobs per month on autopilot. Um, or acquire them within 60 days using our step-by-step -step process to get a seamless flow of jobs strategies use our auto converting ad system and this is completely guaranteed or you get your money back target audience for driven remodelers only um, and if you've got a one-time fee i probably wouldn't include that in sort of the uh the main offer where people can see it so kindly set up i'm just going to go ahead and uh share my screen for this so this is gonna be a super quick walkthrough of Canly. The first step is gonna be integrating your calendar and the second step is gonna be actually creating the events and the specific settings of what we are going to use. But let's go ahead and integrate your calendar. So come to the sidebar here, go down to this four dots here, apps and integrations. Now it will take you to this page and you have a load of different options here, but we're gonna go calendars. Calendars, we're going to be using Google Calendar. Click that. Wait for it to load. And it will bring you up with this page, right? And we're going to click Calendar, add Calendar account, click Connect, right? And it will bring you to the normal Google page where you have to sign in to your uh, Google account and your calendar will then be connected. So that is how you connect your calendar. Let's go to the second step, which is creating, creating an event type. So navigate to the left bar here. You want to kick this big blue button, create. Event type, one on one. Now you can use round robin if you have a closer um, or a business partner. Okay, then it will rotate meetings depending on kind of your availability at that time. But for this example, we're going to be clicking one on one. Click yourself, obviously, if you're scheduling this for yourself. Event name. So you're going to be using the document that I have used. There's many different names um, that you can come with here. Let's say I was doing real estate. I would use listing acquisition um, consultation. Duration, you're going to set to 45 minutes. Now I have Zoom linked rather than Google Meet. So I would click Zoom here, click Continue. And it will then bring you to this page here. So on the left is what we're really going to be focusing on. So we've got the event details, uh, host and invites. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, one-on-one -on -one event. Scheduling settings. This is where we're really going to look at. So select that. And I like to put either four or five days into the future here. Um, you know, we don't want people scheduling in for 14 days because the likelihood that they will actually just completely ghost us and not turn up to the meeting is extremely high. Um, and it also increases between the, if there's a longer period between the meeting, then the likelihood of them showing up um, will decrease. So uh, let's just go five days into the future hours and calendar settings so you're going to want to change these depending on your uh, availability and also where the clients you are working in um, reside basically so these hours wouldn't work for me right because i'm working with us real estate agents so i click this edit button this event type and i would select the time so i know realtors are generally awake from around 2 uh, p.m 
So I go ahead and select 2 p.m. And depending on how late I want to work, I probably keep my calendar open till 10. And you would do the same for every uh, every point there. Save and close. Okay, buffer time after event, 15 minutes. Because, you know, these are 45 meetings, you want a, you know, a nice 15 minute break. Or in case the meeting runs over, then you have got a bit of buffer time before your next meetings. Minimum notice, I like to put three hours because, you know, um, I generally like to have three hours notice before um, anything sort of uh, comes up in my schedule. Right, I don't want to be out and about because I've got no meetings and then suddenly a meeting comes up in my calendar for one hour's time and I have to rush home to uh, take that meeting. So, yeah, three hours is um, something that I would say. Daily limit, wouldn't set time zone display. So you're going to want to use invitees if you're doing ads or if you're running cold email, um, particularly if you're running cold email and you are sending the booking link via email, then you would say use invitees. So if they're opening the booking link in an Eastern time zone, so if they're in Florida, then it would automatically set to um, Eastern. Really good feature that they have. Start time increments, I use 15 minutes. And you would go ahead and press save and close. Booking page options. So this is where you can essentially um, basically ask them for um, all of their kind of information here, um, you know, pre-qualification questions, um, communications. So reminders, um, again, all of this is in our uh, school group. But yeah, I would recommend, uh, you know, 24 hours before, six hours before, and one hour before. Um, email and text reminders. So once that is done, you're going to want to go ahead and copy the link. This is what it will show up as. So this is what it's going to show up uh, as your prospects. You have the option to essentially change the time zone here, but that's a super quick walkthrough of the Canley. You book a time and then you have all of the information here that uh, you have required from them. But yeah, that was all from the Canley walkthrough. And uh, yeah, let's get back to the main document. So these were the settings I had for the uh, Canley. Feel free to just copy and paste those in. Next thing is we're going to be setting up the websites. Um, so yeah, I recommend using Go High Level. One of the best investments for our agency uh, could be used for anything, service delivery, uh, cold calling. You can set up cold callers on there. I'm going to go over that later in this series uh, yeah if you want to support us uh, feel free to use the referral link i'll put that in the description website templates so you can just literally copy and paste our website if you are in the hybrid coaching program domains again uh, purchase on godaddy but something i did really want to speak about was the main couple pricing models okay and uh, there's three kind of main ones that everyone really uh, talked about here and i wanted to give you the pros and cons and metrics of what exactly they are. So the first option is paper appointment. And the pros of this is it's very easy to sign clients on a paper appointment, paper lead basis. And it does pay off well if you have a good service, right? Because it can really stack up. I know people making hundreds of thousands per month in real estate with a pay per lead model. Negatives, you're gonna get low quality clients because you know there is no upfront fee. The upfront fee sort of acts as a barrier for or a filtration system, I guess, for lower quality clients. And if you have these low quality clients, you're also going to have to rely on them being completely honest about how many appointments actually showed up. And uh, that can be pretty tricky. I remember when we were dealing with gyms, um, it was a little bit of a nightmare. But if you are comm taking commission on the back end, it is going to depend from industry to industry. But five to 10 percent, uh, five to 30 percent of the uh, deal size uh, on the on the back end is going to be around right. I know people like Realtor.com, one of the biggest um, kind of real estate uh, marketing agents, well, not really a marketing agency, but they're taking some ridiculous of between 40 and 50% commission on the back end, but they do not charge anything up front. Now, the second option is one of my favorites, which is the upfront fee, um, the non-subscription model. And the reason I like this is because you can scale super, super quickly as soon as you get one deal. So you can collect a lot of cash up front and you can leverage this in other areas of your business, right? So let's say you get an upfront payment for, you know, four grand, right? 
you can just pump all of that money into ads, triple your appointment flow. You can hire loads of cold callers with that and pay them out without having to worry about anything else. And um, you can essentially just pay for appointments and you can scale super, super quickly with uh, this model. Now, the negatives are it is harder to sell. So you may have to get in contact with um, a place which uh, you can get closers from if your closing ability is not quite there yet. And it generally does require a guarantee. So uh, we use uh, the five deals in six months guarantee or you get your money back for a daily consulting. Um, and the metrics for this is 4x of total cost, including ad spend. So let's say you are selling your program for 4,000 US dollars and you are requiring $6,000 in ad spend. So a total of 10,000, right? And you are guaranteeing four deals in the four months that you're working with them. The average deal size that they have to get the actual money in their pocket has to be 10 grand per deal because that would equal 40K, meaning there will be a 4X ROI from there so they can really see that value. The third model is retainer or the subscription model. And I did really like this. Uh, unfortunately, our last gym client left us uh, last month. But the reason I like this is because it was confirmed income every single month to cover the operating costs. And if you've got a CSM managing the clients, you can sort of just sit back and let that roll in the background, this retainer model. But the negatives, it is harder to sell uh, than pay per appointment. But I guess it is easier than an upfront fee. And what I would aim for this is a 2x first month ROI, meaning that every single month you've got to be getting 2x on the total amount of the retainer and the ad spend um, continually. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is the VSL. Why do we need a VSL? Well, there's five clear reasons and it sets clear expectations. So this is something that we've been really trying to improve on in our agency. So saying things like every lead that we're not that we're going to send to you, we can't guarantee that is going to convert into a listing, right? And um, yeah, it just provides the clients with an understanding of what your agency does and setting those expectations right. The second time is uh, the second point is it saves time and it reduces the need for lengthy explanations during the call. The pitch is not long and arduous. Uh, because they already know what they're getting into. And if it's good, um, it's really going to build that trust and credibility as well. So it showcases your professionalism, expertise, and just makes clients more comfortable and confident in your in your service, right? Because we all know trust is one of the key things to making a person actually purchase from you as part of the sales process. The fourth point is it increases engagement. So it's also going to increase sharp rates to the call as well as their engagement in the call. If you're saying the right stuff in this VSL and using the structure that I'm about to go through, then it's going to really increase your credibility there. The fifth point is it filters quality leads out. So ensures that only people who are generally interested and informed of uh, prospects proceed to the call, right? So if you're saying who this is for, who this is not for, then it's really going to filter out the people that we actually want on those calls to, from the unqualified people. Now, the rough structure, I don't see anyone actually really put this into a structure, but I saw this pretty small account on Twitter actually come up with this structure. And you can actually visibly see it even in ads, right? Every ad you get, they all follow this kind of rough structure or there or thereabouts. And it starts with a bold claim. So we're going to guarantee you X in Y days. Then it comes with the prospect pain point. So are you fed up and put, pumping money into ads with really little return? Then you've got a claim to fix their pain. So the, the method that you're doing it, so a member acquisition framework, social proof. So one of your testimonials, take Alex, for example, he recently did this in this short of a time period. Brand intro, so building that rapport. At Stately Consulting, we help uh, realtors get X in Y days. Benefits of your service, we work on a complete paper results, paper lead model, key deliverables, uh, so basically, what we're going to do for you guys, we'll audit of your current marketing efforts, um, ongoing optimization, calling up all of your previous clients because they know they're not going to know what a database reactivation is. Um, and then the next step, reminder of the cost for not chasing. So don't keep throwing the money down the drain. Reminder of the claim. Remember, if we don't get X and Y days, we don't get paid. Social proof and just round it off by saying, if you don't, if you want results like this person who got this in this many days, just just click the schedule button below to see if we can help. So that was all for part one. 
Join the next video where we're going to go over instantly how to set that up and also the cold calling system where we're going to focus on getting meetings for our agency.